Okay, I'm going to work through the example that is in the notes of how to calculate the pH of a sulfuric acid, con uh, sulfuric acid solution with a concentration of 0.1 that is between those two values of 0 0.001 and 0.5, which decide how you calculate it. This is the worst of the three options. It's option three, where essentially this first equivalent is going to go to completion, and then we have to do an ice method for the second part. Okay, so the first equivalent, essentially what this tells us is this means that from this first reaction, we are going to have 0 0.100 molar of H3P, or H3O plus. Not surprising, it's a strong acid, it goes to completion. So since that's 0.1, this is 0.1. Now we also need to figure out how much H3O plus is generated from the second equation. So we're gonna to need to do an ice method. We also need to check the assumption this off to the side. So what we do is we take the concentration of HSO4 minus, which is also 0.1, divided by the Ka value for that second reaction. 1.1 times 10 to the negative second. And it comes out to 9, which is less than 100. So we have to use the quadratic. I will tell you that unfortunately every value in that range, the 0 0.001 up to 0.5, none of them get a quad get an assumption check of over a hundred. So they all require the quadratic. Sorry. So the rest of this is just an ice method problem. So this is 0 0.100, this goes away, 0, 0. This is gonna decrease by some amount. These are gonna increase by that same amount, just like all the other ice method ones we've seen in the acid-base chapter. This comes out to 0 0.100 minus x, and this is x, and this is x. We have a Ka value, and it's Ka is the same thing as Kc, so it's products of reactants at equilibrium. So Ka is 1.1 times 10 to the negative second, and products of reactants is x times x, so I'm just gonna write it as x squared, and this is 0 0.100 minus x. Our assumption is not above 100, so we cannot get rid of that minus x at the bottom. So we're gonna have to do all the legwork to set up the quadratic equation. So the first thing we're gonna do is multiply this to the other side. And we'll do that on both sides. On this side, it cancels out, and you end up with this, which we're going to need to multiply out. So if you multiply that out, 0.1 times 1.1 times 10 to the negative second is 1.1 times 10 to the negative third. It's a tenth of that. Okay, minus 1.1 times 10 to the negative second times x. This is equal to x squared. So showing all of our work, we're going to subtract this off both sides. Here, though and then we're gonna have to add 1.1 times 10 to the negative second X to both sides this goes away this goes away and this whole side becomes equal to zero I'm going to rewrite it just to make it look clear but and I'm gonna switch sides to make it look more like what we're used to seeing for the quadratic but X squared plus 1.1 times 10 to the negative second x minus 1.1 times 10 to the negative third is equal to zero. So we have the quadratic equation, which we saw in the previous problem. Um, a is going to be 1, b is going to be positive 1.1 times 10 to the negative second, and c is negative 1.1 times 10 to the negative third. So when we plug everything in, it's negative b, which is 1.1 times 10 to the negative second, plus or minus, but we only care about the positive answer, times the square root of b squared minus 4ac. b squared would be 1.1 times 10 to the negative second squared minus 4ac. 4 is, you know, a number. 1 is our a value, and c is negative 1.1 times 10 to the negative third. All of that divided by 2a, and a is 1. I do lazy to type this in my calculator since I have the answer in front of me. X comes out to be 0 0.028 molar. 
and this is equal to the concentration of H3O plus from the second reaction. But we also had H3O plus from the first reaction. So the first, the first reaction gave us that much, the second gave us that much, we need to add them together. So the total amount of H3O plus is basically 0 0.100 from the first reaction plus this 0 0.028 from the second reaction. And it gives us a value of 0 0.128. This is our concentration of H3O plus for both reactions combined. They're both in the same solution, so we can just visualize them all being there together. So we just take the negative log of this, and the answer comes out to 0.893. Okay, so again, we have two potential H's coming off of here. Basically, this is a polyprotic acid. So if this value is between 0 0.001 and 0.5, if that's our concentration, you're going to have to assume the first equivalent goes to completion and then do the ice method for the second. Neither of these are new skills. It's the whole adding it together at the end that's the only new part, honestly. But, yeah. It's pretty specific to H2SO4, but unfortunately it's a pretty common acid.